How can truth claims be uh, maintained in a free and democratic society while at the same time respecting those who don't believe them? I think the, the key here is to understand that truth claims don't go all the way up or shouldn't go all the way up. To use a biblical analogy, when, and it's often lawyers who, are, who, the one, who interrogate Jesus. It's fascinating. It's a lawyer who comes to ask the question. And there are often questions about jurisdiction. And the one I'm thinking about at the moment in relation to this question of truth claims is whether we should pay taxes. And the response is the famous coin. And whose image is on the coin? This is a gesture towards recognizing the appropriate jurisdiction of the state, as we now would call it, law and politics. Remember, there's a trialogue involved in culture. The state is law and politics, in a sense, is the, are the systems that govern the ordering. Society are civil society and voluntary organizations. Those are the things we join freely. And they're things that we join, we may be born into. So that'll be our family, our community. And then our clubs, sports, music, uh, all of the things, women's groups, men's groups, gay rights groups, you name the kind of group, they all have a voice in the voluntary association. And what results is culture. Culture is, the, is what results from the mediation of civil society by law. Okay? The problem with the coin, Jesus uses the coin, he says, whose image is on this coin? Caesar. Um, okay, you pay taxes to that realm, but to God's realm, that's where the rest and virtually everything really important happens, okay? So the problem with religion's historical incapacity to deal with difference, what we now would call theocracy, the rule of the state by belief in God, was its confusion about the extent to which one side of the coin should govern the other side of the coin.